make it a song book, turn to 235. We're going to do this without music. I dreamed this song all night long last night. Once like a bird in prison I dwelt, no freedom from my sorrow I felt. But Jesus came and listened to me, and glory to God, he set me free, he set me free, he set me free. He broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see. For glory to God, He set me free. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground, and glory to God, I'm homeward bound. He set me free, he set me free, he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glory bound, my Jesus, to see for glory. He set me free. Goodbye to sin and things that confound. Thought of the world shall turn me around. Daily I'm working and I'm praying to Him. Glory to God. I'm going. morning he wants to set you free he set me free he set me free he broke the bonds of prison for me i'm glory bound my jesus to see for glory to god he set me free set me free at the cross 264 
146. I feel like standing, stand on this. You know it's singing good and loud.
Morning. Morning. How's everybody today? Awake? You sure? Yeah. <laughs> Good morning. 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 Glad to see everybody's come this way today. Good to be in the house of the Lord, ain't it? Amen. If you're visiting with us, we thank God for you. We want you to feel free to worship the Lord with us today. Is he sure worthy to be worshipped? Amen. Amen. Worthy to be praised. Amen. God is so good, and I love him today. We thank God for, him, for what he's done for us. I'm also going to be in the book of Luke, the second chapter. Brother Ronnie's in the fifth chapter. We're going to open the second chapter of the book of Luke this morning. If you'd like to follow with us in the reading of God's word. Book of Luke, the second chapter. While you're turning there, if you're able to, stand to your feet. The power of God was present to heal. The same power of God is present today. Amen. Amen. 
There is a name I love to hear. I love to sing. It's worth it. Sounds like music in my ear. The sweetest name on earth. Let him know it. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. So, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. And the church said, Amen. 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 Had to get that out. Amen. Loosen my lungs up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Luke chapter 2. I'm going to start reading in the 25th verse. The Bible said, Behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took he him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us, thou thy servant, depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce thine own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Amen. Brother James Alice House, do you care to take us to the Lord this morning, brother? Yes, God, we praise you. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, have your way. Yes, mighty God. Lord, help us, Jesus. Yes, God. Help us, Jesus. Give us that unction to function, Lord God. Lord, save them, Jesus. Yes, God. Yes. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Thank you, Brother James. Good humble prayer. Good. James mentioned something about Jesus and the most famous name that they are. Went right with that song that we ended up with there. There is a name I love to hear. The name of Jesus still gets people's attention. Amen. And that's why that the Bible said, and God said, there's no other name given. Whereby man must be saved. The name of Jesus Christ. So if you're here and you're lost today, call on Jesus. He'll answer you. Amen. He saved with such of a broken heart, contrite spirit. You might be sad because of sin that you've committed. Your heart might be broken for things that's happened. That's just the kind of people God's looking for, amen. And I'm glad he found me when he come looking for me. I tell you, I ain't been the same and never will be since the Lord came in. We're looking at the scripture today and when Jesus was still just a baby after that he had been brought into the world through Mary. The angel came down and told Mary that even though she was a virgin, uh, that she would conceive and bear a, a child, and that child was sent forth to save his people from their sins. Amen. And I thought about how that this man Simeon, the Bible said, was there in the, in the temple. He came to Jerusalem, and he was a just man and devout, which meant that he lived right, and he, and he followed God, and he was good in all that he did. And he believed what the prophets had spoken. 
And because God saw that obedience, he placed the Holy Ghost upon Simeon. Amen. And he said he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. You can run reference to that, and it'll take you back to Isaiah of chapter 40, where the Bible said that he talked about the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Uh, Simeon knew by how God had revealed unto him that he, what he was waiting on, he was going to see. The, John the Baptist, the forerunner of Christ, was coming, and the Holy Ghost had revealed unto him, you ain't going to die until you see the Lord's Christ. Amen. And I thought about it, it was interesting here in the uh, 25th verse where it said he was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He believed that God was going to save his people. Amen. How many believes that God can still save this people in this land today? Uh, and I want to preach today uh, on the thought of some things are worth waiting for. Amen. Uh, some things are worth waiting for. Simeon believed it. And I'm asking you today if you believe that God can still save, uh, can still answer prayers, can still deliver people from bad situations, can still heal sickness. How many believe that with me today? Uh, God can still move and God can still do great things. Amen. But there's a problem that we have as mankind. Uh, we live in a day and time in a society where waiting is something that is popular, amen. Our society thinks that it's not good to wait. Our society thinks that everything should be available to us as soon as we ask for these things, amen. I thought about how that we've got a lot of conveniences, amen. Brother Ronnie was talking about roads in the Sunday school lesson this morning and how that we have more roads now than we've ever had. It don't take you near as long now uh, to get the places as it used to because infrastructure in our, in our society has gotten bigger and it's gotten better and, it, and it's easier to travel places and you can travel there at a shorter distance than what you could ever travel before. And if we get slowed down every bit in society, a uh, man gets aggravated. I saw that uh, for, with my own eyes. The Lord showed me this. I was, uh, I guess you could say, preaching to myself Friday morning that, uh, I had to move a piece of equipment for our road department. Me and Robbie and just a couple other fellers, only three or four that left that's got Class A licenses. I was moving a piece of equipment uh, to the shop to get it worked on, and I was going up 30. And 30 has been a nice add to our community. 30 makes it easier to get in and out of Jackson County. But I'll tell you what 30 has done in a lot of places. But it's opened it up for NASCAR, amen. Uh, and, and I know that you all are like me. You sometimes you get in a rush. And, or maybe you have got up that morning and you heard it and lay down right. <laughs> Amen. That's why you shave it off. You heard it and lay down right. And you, you use it in a rush. And I've, I've seen people literally going down the road putting makeup on the same time. Please don't do that. I don't want to preach your funeral early. Amen. And there's time to get ready. And I put it this way. I have realized... Uh, through the life, time that I've lived here on this earth, if you're late getting somewhere, if there's a lot of traffic in front of you and you're getting aggravated, that might be God's way of protecting you. Amen. And you just don't realize it. Why? Because we don't like to wait. But he had people passing me in turning lanes, in emergency lanes, and everything in the world. And I looked down, I was running 55, and I thought, that's the speed limit up through here. But people do not like to wait, amen. Uh, the internet's been one thing that we've got in our day and time that's been very useful, amen. I'm going to tell you young people something that me and Misty, when we got married 22 years ago, there wasn't no such thing as internet. Uh, when we decided where we was going to go after we got married on the honeymoon, I had to call down there and see if they had reservations. How did you call? We used to call it calling Mall Bell, amen, and getting a number out of the directory and the internet has replaced a lot of that. I'm not preaching against the internet because we're using it uh, to get the gospel out uh, of the church that we're in today. There's some good things, as Brother Ronnie said this morning, that has come out of it. Uh, but one thing bad, I believe, uh, that has happened with the onset of the internet uh, 
is taking away our ability, uh, our taking away our tolerance, if you will, uh, of being able to wait. Amen. Uh, if I look up something on my phone uh, and it don't download fast enough to suit me, uh, or if I ain't got enough service to answer something, uh, I automatically get aggravated. And I'm going to say most of us uh, I do that. Why? Because these things uh, have kind of spoiled us. Amen. Uh, we're not used, we're not accompanied uh, or acquainted with waiting like we used to be. Amen. Uh, but how many knows the Bible uh, from front to back says good things happen uh, for those that wait upon the Lord. Amen. Uh, and why does it tell us that, preacher Shane? Uh, why ain't God snapped his fingers uh, and, and healed a pandemic? Uh, why ain't God answered the prayers of saving uh, uh, the children we've been praying for to be saved? Uh, why ain't God moving in places uh, where we're begging God to move? Uh, I'm going to tell you we're much like Daniel. Uh, we can pray 21 days uh, and God hear us the first day that we pray. Uh, uh, but we need to do like Daniel uh, and keep on a praying anyway. Uh, uh, because when God sees it to be right uh, is when God's going to do it. Uh, you might be discouraged sitting in this church today Day, uh, because you feel like hardship uh, has come upon you uh, uh, because you've had to wait uh, and it seems like God uh, is not hearing or not answering uh, uh, the prayer that you're praying. Uh, I cannot tell you my friend. Uh, I want you to keep on uh, uh, keeping on uh, and show God some faith uh, uh, because when and how God answers it, uh, it's going to be right for you uh, and it's going to be right for your family. Uh, it's going to be right for the people people you're in contact with because uh, how many agree with a preacher today uh, God ain't never done nothing but right amen uh, he's never had an accident uh, he's not too early uh, he's not too late uh, if Mary and Martha I uh, would have had it their way uh, Jesus would have appeared as soon as they'd have called uh, but Jesus waited until Lazarus had already died and been in the ground before he went uh, to where he was at uh, why did it happen that way preacher. Well it happened that way for a reason. God wanted to show how through his son Jesus Christ how that he also not only can he heal on this earth but he can also heal and deliver of sin and he also can conquer death how that he also can do for you and I what we thought was impossible. I'm telling you if you're praying today and you're about to give up I can Keep on a praying. I keep on seeking the Lord. I cause He's nigh unto them that are looking for Him. I God's hearing that prayer, child. I God knows what that need is. And if you give up, how you cut yourself short? Keep waiting on God. Amen. You know I desire to see people walk this aisle every Sunday and give their heart to Jesus Christ. Do you know every time I come in on Sunday night and Wednesday, I'm anticipating the move of God. I'm waiting to see people that's lost to get found. Amen. Do you realize that I desire and pray every day of my life that God you'd save the soul uh, uh, that's nearest hell but do you also realize and know uh, that if I could pick you out uh, and bring you to the Lord and try to save you uh, it wouldn't do you or me either one uh, any good amen uh, I could stand here and say repeat this prayer after me uh, and you'll be alright uh, uh, but without the drawing power of the Holy Ghost uh, and conviction upon your heart uh, uh, you ain't going to get no further uh, out in the back door, amen. I'm telling you, uh, sometimes uh, some things are worth waiting for, amen. And I'm telling you, I believe when the time is right, that's why I don't want to miss church. That's why I have a desire to be uh, gathered with the house of God, in the house of God, uh, with the people of God. Because uh, one of these days, uh, we're going to see a great coming to the Lord. Uh, one of these days, these children uh, that we're praying for, are going to get saved. Amen. I one of these days I will see grandmas and grandpas and moms and dads I come into the house of God. Some things are worth waiting for. Amen. Don't rush God. Let God be God. But also don't limit God. Amen. Because God, the power of the Lord is present. Woo! How many knows that? Some things are worth waiting on. Let me ask you this. 
When was the last time that you got a handwritten letter in the mail from your family? Well, we'll text each other anymore. Amen. It's the most convenient and the quickest way to, to get it without bothering them. We say we don't want to bother them, so we'll text them. My mom's oldest sister, Elaine, used to about once a month, we'd get a letter in the mail. Man, Stephen, remember when we was growing up? She lived in Ohio, and they didn't talk that often, long distance back then. A lot of us didn't have that. It, we just used it for emergencies when we did. How many members those days? Amen. Now you can pull your cell phone out and ain't got to worry about long distance. You can call. You'll sure get a call about a car warranty. I'm praying for God to remove that. And I'm waiting. <laughs> Amen. 65 hog trough. <laughs> what do you got? Anyway, we would get a letter. Me and Stephen would open up. Me and Liam would write to Mom about things that was happening in Hamilton, Ohio, and how her and Uncle Don was doing and things like that. I bet Leona's got some of them letters in time too and and I bet many of you how many of you remember getting handwritten letters from your family and then you'd sit down and you'd write them back you had a little bit of a relationship and we'd wait on the next letter to come because the next letter we, we knew they was going to tell us some good things has happened maybe they've been sick maybe there was something else going on and, and them letters is what we desired to have until we see our loved ones face to face until a reunion came we could cherish and hang on to them letters. How many's got your Bible? Hold it up right real high. Amen. There's a lot of letters in this Bible that Paul writ to the churches. Amen. And in those letters that he wrote, he would always say, I desire to see you. I desire for one day for us to be together. In other words, I'm paraphrasing. They don't speak to exactly that way, but that's what they meant. Paul cherished the letters that he would send out in the church, cherished the letters. And God had to, had to I put them letters in the Word of God. Amen. And now we read how that Paul uh, told these uh, uh, churches, this is what you do and this is what you don't do. Uh, and we still got them in the Word of God. Uh, and we still cherish them. Uh, and, and just like we would get letters from our uh, family and then and, and long for the reunion. Uh, I read in these letters uh, uh, where Jesus that I have believed in. Uh, uh, Jesus that I've placed my faith in. Uh, uh, Jesus that I have saved has save my soul according to the letters I'm going to get to see him face to face according to the letters I'm going to get to go where he's at he said I'm making a country who's better makers God and I long for the day I to see the letter fulfilled amen that we get to be with Jesus I'm telling you church of the living God it's going to be something to get excited about and I'm going to show you in just a minute, but sometimes we rush things. When we rush things, the end result is not good. Driving too fast. Working too many jobs to get wants. God said, I'll supply your needs. Amen. He didn't mention nothing about wants. Sometimes He gives us them anyway. But if you've got to have it in your life, God's going to give it to you. Sometimes God will give you things that you don't need to show them that you don't need them. Amen. But uh, uh, we, we work too many jobs because we got to uh, fulfill these desires. We want to have what everybody else has got. Let me back up and stop right there for just a minute. Christian friend, if you're trying to build your life around your neighbor, uh, tear that down and start over. Amen. If you're trying to build your life around the preacher, tear that down and start over. Build your life upon Jesus Christ. Let God give you what God's going to give you. Let Him bless you. Let Him show you. Follow Him and it'll be all right. Amen. Uh, some things are worth waiting for. Uh, rushing a relationship can be devastating. Uh, I've, I've counseled many people that has walked into marriage because they was married on lust and not love. They didn't wait, amen, I had to see how things would work. Don't rush these things, children. I let God put you together with who God put you together with. And when you do, whom God has put together, let no man join asunder, amen. I don't let nobody tear that up. We've all seen things happening in this world that's got us discouraged. But instead of waiting on the Lord, we're trying to divvy dabble it out ourselves. We're trying to fix these problems 
ourselves. We can't fix some things, friend. Only God can. That's the reason you need to wait. Look at the scripture. This man Simeon. I buddy, uh, listen, you can go and read in Hebrews chapter 1. And the Lord in sundry times in various matters, he would speak to the people by the prophets. Amen. Not everybody walking around this day and time had the presence of God in their life, but Simeon did. Amen. God chose to use him for this fashion. And I wondered what it was like for Simeon. Because he said he waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost revealed to him that he wasn't going to die until he saw Jesus Christ. I wonder what it was like as he went into Jerusalem, into that temple. I don't believe he went in there with his head down. I don't believe he went in there discouraged. I believe every time he went in there, he was looking for the promise of the Father. Amen. Now that's an attitude to have when you come into the house of God. Come looking. Come expecting. Do your part and worship God. And watch God be God. Amen. Because Simeon, when he went in there, I believe he knew that one day the Redeemer of his home country and the light to the Gentiles was going to come into that door and the Holy Ghost was going to tell him who it was. He believed it with everything in him. And I believe if you had his testimony, he'd say that was worth waiting for. Amen. I believe he was getting old. We don't know a lot about Simeon, but I believe he was getting old. Because it said, he said, I ain't going to die until I see him. So maybe he was an older man and thought, my time is run out. I know how the devil works. Every one of us that's a Christian has fit him tooth and nail. Probably this week, amen. amen. Probably this week you fit him a lot. And I know how the devil is. He tried to get things in your mind and tell you things to try to discourage your work for the Lord. But let me tell you what faith is. Faith is knowing God hears you and he'll work it out for you good. That's what faith is. Knowing when you pray faith believing, you know that God's hearing you and he's going to work it out in his time and his way and for his purpose. That's what it is. So if you ain't seen that loved one get saved, can I tell you, keep praying. If you ain't seen that child get healed, can I tell you, keep praying. If you ain't seen that family member that's out of the will of God come back in the house of God, can I tell you, Keep praying, amen. Because if you give up, what's going to happen? I tell you, if God's people ain't been a praying, I believe we'd already see the Lord return, amen. I believe Jesus would already come, but God's people are praying because we know people. How many of you today know somebody that needs saved, amen? Know somebody that needs delivered. Know somebody that has a great uh, need in their life and only God can fulfill that need. I'm telling you, some things happen and some things are worth waiting for when they happen, amen? And if you'll be faithful unto God, you'll reap the good fruits of the labor that God has bestowed upon these people. I'm telling you, Paul said that he was reaping fruit of the labor of, of a harvest. He was reaping a harvest that he had no labor in. He was getting to see things that, 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 that the disciples did before his time, amen. And you and I are getting to see that as well. That young man or woman or boy or girl or older man or woman that walked down the aisle, that mom and daddy or pastor prayed for a friend or friend or neighbor or relative prayed for that you see walk down the aisle, that's a product of somebody's fervent prayer. Amen. Now I want to tell you this. When, when Simeon saw Jesus come into that temple. The Bible said in the 27th verse. He came by the Spirit into the temple. Oh, let's not hinder the Spirit today when we come into the temple. Amen. Because he came in there and the Spirit was there. And when the, child, the parents brought in the child Jesus to do him after the custom of the law. Right there tells you he didn't come to do away with the law. He came to fulfill it. He was doing what they said to do. The Simeon, as soon as he saw him, the Spirit of God said, That's him. That's the Redeemer. He went and he took the child in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. In other words, you've kept your word, God. You've kept your, you're faithful to your promises. You're always going to do what you said you're going to do. And now I'm holding the Redeemer of the world in my arms. And he blessed God and said, Thank you, Lord, that I've got to meet this Christ. That I've got to see the one that's going to save my grandchildren. Generations of people are going to be touched by what this little child 
is going to do. Amen. I've waited. And now I've got to see it. Amen. Now I've got to be a part of it. If you ain't in the temple, you ain't getting to be a part of it. Amen. Ain't you glad you're here to be a part of what God's doing? Amen. Because today's the day of salvation for somebody. It may be the day we see them walk by and Jesus take them into His arms. What a day that'd be. Amen. Hallelujah. We ought to be excited when we see somebody give their heart to Jesus. We ought to rejoice. Say that's another victory. It's been won. That's another and taken out of the grips of Satan and put into the hand of Jesus. There's a difference because God holds you in the palm of his hand. The Satan wants you right here. Why? Because he can squeeze you. And he can torment you. And he can pull you and push you. But God wants you right in the palm. Why? Because the palm's in the middle of your hand. And it's protected all the way around. God's fingers protects anything. It can. You believe God can set a hedge about you? I know he can. I, I've been asking God to keep our church healthy, to keep our people healthy, and to help us. I mean, can I tell you something today? When God decides to move, it'll move. Until then, keep praying. And don't get discouraged and don't give up. Somebody gets sick in your family, keep praying. Amen. Somebody uh, walks away from God, keep praying. Amen. Don't you give up because some things are worth waiting for. Yeah. And there's a reason you're still alive and ticking. Yeah. Sorry I wouldn't wait in the Bible. God told Abraham, I'm going to give you a son. Sorry I didn't believe it. She wouldn't wait. And she convinced Abraham to lay with her, their servant. And guess what happened? The whole nation came out of that. A whole nation came out of that. That has still tormenting this earth. Amen. Because somebody wouldn't wait. Yeah. Amen, Amen church. Amen. They wouldn't wait. They wouldn't believe. And because of that. There's still people running around against God. Amen. Yeah. They're terrorists in this life. Why? Because they weren't the child of the promise. Amen. Amen. They wouldn't wait upon the promise of God. This man Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. He loved his people. I believe when he went in that temple. He prayed for his people. And when the time was right. Is when God came, amen. amen. So don't you give up on God. You stay faithful to God. If I die this week, make me a promise. I'll stay faithful to God. Amen. I'll stay faithful to church. I'm going to serve Him till I die. Can I hear amen, amen. on that? I'm going to serve Him. No matter what works and worse goes wrong in this world, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ until my death, amen. amen. Make a promise to God because He's going to follow you. Amen. He's going to lead you. Take you by the hand. I want to end with this scripture. Isaiah chapter 64. You got your Bibles. See, Simeon, when they brought that child to him, he said, I've saw it. God's fulfilled it. Mine eyes have seen your salvation. Boy, he was excited. Which thou hast prepared before the face of all people a light to lighten the Gentiles, the glory of thy people Israel. Simeon said, I've got to see it. God kept his promise. God told me he's going to let me see that. God kept his promise. Many things has hindered me. Many things has tried to keep me from going. But I'm in this temple today, and God, I got to see his promise fulfilled. They marveled at what he had to say. But Simeon, he blessed Mary and Joseph. And began to tell them what this child was here for. The fall and the rise again of many in Israel. And a sign which we spoken against. A, a sword's going to pierce your soul also. She was going to have to watch her son die on the cross. Well, in Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4. 64 and 4. God has something waiting for us that's worth waiting on. And he said, for since the beginning of the world, men have not heard, nor perceived by the ear." Neither hath the eye seen, O oh God, beside thee, what he hath prepared for him that what? Waiteth for him. Well, this sort of sounds like what Paul said, didn't it? I have not seen, hear have not heard, neither is it entered into the heart of man the things God's got prepared for them that love him. If you love him, you'll wait on him, amen. If you love him, you'll look for him. If you love him, you'll serve him. If you love him, you'll be devoted unto what God says to be devoted unto. 
If you love Him, my friend, your life will be an example for people out there that know I'm not perfect. Yes, I fail and come short of God, but I love Him and He loves me. And He's molding me and He's making me into what I need to be in this life. And when I die, I'm going to leave this old body. I'm going to leave this old sin that's in this world. And I'm going to go to a place whose country and builder and maker is God. And I'm forever going to be with the Lord because He loves me. Amen. How many of you love today? You love Jesus? He's worth waiting on. He's worth waiting on. I ain't like it. Give me five. There you go. That's my preaching buddy. I'm telling you, just wait. Might make a preacher. You never know. We look at these little children and we look at them growing up and we think, uh, well, I can't wait till they take their first steps. Or, I can't wait till they say their first words. Or, I can't wait till they ride their first bike. I can't wait till they get through preschool. And can't wait till they go through middle school and high school and see them graduate college. And then when you get to that point in your life, in their life, you're thinking, where did time go? Anybody with me today? And, and if you're like me, you're thinking, why can't we just back this up and start over? Because I've made a lot of mistakes. And I believe I could do a better job at it. Well, it ain't meant to be that way, my friend. But I'm going to ask you to do something as fathers and mothers in this house of God today. Will you do that? Come here, buddy. You come up here with me? All right. Assistant pastor. <laughs> Amen. Give me five. There we go. Set an example for these babies. Amen. Love your children. Amen. Pray for them every day of your life. Amen. Because they're a blessing from God. And you got one shot to raise them. I know a child right now that me and Missy has been praying for that is gone out, was raised right, was raised in the house of God, has lived, has went off, tried to start her own life, and uh, made some mistakes, and heading down the wrong road as we stand here today in this church. Me and Misty was eating dinner the other night, and I said, uh, you know what? We know how that child was raised. They was raised in the house of God. And when a child is raised to know the Lord, when they get old, they won't depart from that. That's a promise. It's right in Proverbs. And I said, let me tell you something. I said, that daughter, her mom and dad, has prayed and done their best. Someday, God will show her what has happened. And God will gently bring her home. God's able, friend. Well, I can't wait to see it. Some things are worth waiting for, my friend. God sometimes will let you make mistakes just to show you that you need Him in your life. Amen. Sometimes things will go wrong just to show you that you're not in control. And, and, and a lot of people get them mixed up and think, well, that, the Lord just don't like me because these bad things are happening to me. No, my friend, let me tell you something. Jesus loves everybody. Amen. Amen. And, and the Bible tells me that, that He came to die for the sins of the whole world, not just a few, everybody. The blood of Jesus can cleanse. Yeah. And I'll tell you something today. This would be a good day to get to know this man Jesus. Amen. Or maybe your relationship with him has got kind of faded. Maybe you're not where you used to be or doing what you used to do. Maybe you're just so discouraged anymore. You know, I thought if anything, I thought if anything, when we got in the middle of this pandemic, we'd see more people coming to God. I've seen more people running away from him. Yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah. There's a very important election coming up in a few weeks. We better be praying. Amen. Amen. We better be voting. Yeah. We better be doing God's will. And more important than that, Jesus is coming. Amen. And I got people's not ready. Boy, you get heavy after a few minutes. <laughs> you big boy, ain't you? Let's get a song of invitation. Let's get a song of invitation. Stand to your feet. God tenderly calls. Boy, that morning he called me April the 7th. It was a pretty day. Sitting about halfway back over here in the side of the church. Lord had been knocking at my heart all week. Billy, I was burdened. I was ashamed. Sin will do you that way, amen? amen. I was ashamed. I thought they won't, people ain't going. They're going to jump all over me, kick us all out of church. 
If I come up there and tell them I need to get saved, ain't nobody going to believe it. Boy, the devil was whooping me hard. But I placed some faith in Jesus. And I said, you're all I've got. And you know what he told me? I'm all you need. And I fell in his arms. Brother Earl, I believe I saved before I got past the first window. Amen. I fell in his arms. And I didn't find no discouragement in the church. They don't know why shame. What I found was rejoicing. That's what happened in heaven. If you're lost and undone, you come to Jesus, there's going to be some rejoicing. Every soul that's saved, they rejoice over that soul. I thank God it's that way. Some things are worth waiting for. How many is going to pray today as we sing? for his mercy and his grace. We're going to do this. 
I'd like you to bow your head and close your eyes with me for just a minute before we leave the house of God today. Are you here today and you've been praying for something and you haven't seen it happen yet and it's burdened your life and you'd like some help praying, would you lift your hand? God sees these hands. God sees them going up all over this house. You know what's the wonderful thing about a church is we help one another pray. We're the body of Christ and we pray with each other and for each other. Are you here today? And let me ask you this. You know you've been saved, but you're not where you need to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Would you lift your hand? God sees the hands. God sees the hands. Can I ask you this? Maybe you're here today and you've never been saved. And God has been speaking to your heart. And you'd like for me to help pray for you. And There's nobody looking around. But you'd like the church to help you pray. Would you lift your hand? God sees the hand. Anybody else? Be honest. Be honest. Father in heaven today, Lord, you know the needs of your people. You see the needs, and when we be honest with ourselves, Lord, when we're honest with ourselves, and we are completely open to what you have to say to us, there's good things that's waiting on us. When we follow your will, Lord, and when we do what you tell us to do, it makes such a difference in our lives. God, I pray for those that are burdened today because of prayers that they're praying that, God, they haven't seen the, the move that they expected, but help them to keep praying, keep waiting, because when you send it, it'll be right. I pray for those that have lifted up their hand that said, Lord, we, I need to be in your will. I'm, I'm, I've slipped away. I'm not what I used to be, and maybe sometimes I'm not what I need to be, but God, I just need help. And Lord, if we'd be honest, we all could raise our hand on that. We all could raise our hand and say, Lord, these days, I'm just not there. But I'm glad you are. Lord, help these hands. And for the hand that went up, the one that seeks and desires salvation. Lord, when we place our faith in you, and you said in your word, when we believe in our heart, the Lord Jesus, and confess with our mouth that we'd be saved. And God... All that is, is putting our faith and trust in you and declaring that you are our Savior. There are so many in this church that we've been blessed to see do that. And we pray for the ones that have not yet. Pray that you give them earnest help this morning. Peace, God, that when they get saved, that it, what, a notion, God, to come to you for salvation. Because, God, we know that when they get saved, There'll be peace there that they have not got. There'll be joy there that they have not known. Lord, I pray for everyone that's in this place today, all of them that's been watching by way of internet. God, meet every single need. I know you can. We just need to wait and keep praying. And Lord, I love you and I praise you and I just adore you today for all that you do. God, we are honored and joyful to be in your house today. In Jesus' name, amen.